Hi everyone. Uh, so today we'll be discussing three points. Uh, the first one is what is the OSP Juice Shop, then how you can access it, and uh, the third point would be then how we can complete few of the challenges as part of OSP Juice Shop. Okay. So let's uh, discuss about the first point. What is OSP Juice Shop? Uh, if you quickly Google it on, uh, yeah, Google itself. Uh, so you will understand that it's a kind of a lab environment created by uh, OSP organization only and it's an open source project so you can download it on your computer you can run it there as well you can host it on, on, a, on a web server as well and also there is one thing that uh, it is there is a particular room as well on try hack me that you can access to to access this particular lab environment okay so that's how it is then uh, let's move on to the second part where uh, we'll understand how you can access it uh, we are not going to discuss it how you can host on your own web server or how you can run it locally we will directly refer to the part where you can access it on the try hack me platform maybe in future i will make a separate video uh, to set it up on your local machine on or on a web server of your own okay so how you can do it on uh, try hack me you have to go to the learn section and then click on the search part just search for OSP and this is the environment or lab environment we want to access so the room name is OSP juice shop this is the room okay now to access it first of all what you have to do you have to click on the start machine here I have already done so that's why I can see the target uh, lab IP address here okay now if you try to access it directly without being connected to try hack me vpn okay you won't be able to access it so there are two ways where you will be able to access this particular ip uh, one is from the attack box i have already started the attack box that's why you see the show split view here so one way is you can access it within the attack box uh, browser attack box that is provided by uh, uh, try hack me only okay so in in attack box if you go to your browser and uh, search for that particular ip and try to access it you would be able to access this particular os juice shop site here okay another way of accessing it from your windows itself is you can uh, connect to the try hack me labs uh, by going to the access link here you download the vpn configuration and using the open vpn client you can import that particular file here and connect to it okay i have already created a separate video on it i will put the link in description how you can connect to try acme labs using your windows os only okay so now i have already done so that's why if i try to access this ip in my browser i would be able to access it so if i search it you can see that i can load this website because i am connected to try hackme vpn okay now uh, we'll try to complete few of the parts here of this particular room uh, so the in the first part it is only asking us to be connected to this particular lab and everything okay so we'll just click on we have completed that part now let's move on to the task 2 part here before we do so what I will do I will just go through the whole website and I will show you what is the functionality here okay so it looks like a e-commerce kind of website where you can order some things you can add something in your basket okay if you click on an item you can see what are the reviews as well uh, just a moment I am actually logged in uh, with an account so yeah right now I'm logged not logged in so if you're not logged in you can see that you you can see other users reviews here okay and yeah these kind of functionality is there you are not able to add it add uh, this item to your basket because you are not logged in right now okay apart from this you have the login functionality here when you go to account part then you have the search functionality if you want to search for anything you have the language change option here if you go to the slide menu you have the customer feedback so you can provide feedback uh, to this particular website from here then you have about us page like we have uh, on most of the website about what is OS juice shop and everything okay then we have a photo wall so there are different photos stored here so this part is also there then a scoreboard I'm not going to go into this part but what this part is it's not uh, actually 
something that we want to find some bugs in okay it is just to keep a record of like how many bugs you have found on this particular lab okay OS juice, juice shop only okay so we are not uh, supposed to find any bugs on this particular page okay it's just to track how many bugs or vulnerabilities you have found on this particular website okay so yeah so now that we have discussed how the website looks like uh, let's move on to the uh, part where we'll be completing few of the questions so the first question is what is the administrator email address here okay so we will have to go through the website functionality a little bit and that way we'll be able to find out what is the admin uh, user uh, email address okay so let's click here like try to look through some of the reviews here here in the review we have one email address like bender at the rate shop dot op right similarly let's click on others as well try to see if at any point of time the admin user has submitted anything in the review part um, yeah so in the apple juice part we can see that admin has submitted a uh, review with this particular email id address okay so that part if we submit here we would be able to complete this particular part so what we get like what we understand from this part is you should be exploit exploring the whole website before we start finding bugs on a particular website we should be always trying to find as many functionalities and as many information about the website before we are getting into finding the bugs okay so that's what we learn from this part now let's see what parameter is used for searching so it is asking like what is the url parameter is used uh, to perform the searches so let's click on the search functionality let's search for something like uh, testing and press enter we can see that this testing parameter is reflected in the URL in the URL parameter called Q. So we'll put it to complete this question. So again, the same thing we should be understanding where exactly our input is being reflected and everything. So it is right now reflected in the URL parameter and also it is reflected on the page. Whatever we are searching, it is reflected on the page and it is reflected in the main URL. Okay. Now, what does Jim reference in his shows? Okay, so there is a green smoothie part actually here on this uh, particular uh, site where Jim posted a comment. Okay, and uh, f uh, he posted something like fresh out of a replicator. Now, the question is what show, TV show Jim was referring to? Okay, so like what we will see here, like he is uh, referring something like replicator, but we don't know which tv show it is related to so let's search it on google something like replicator tv show something like this like we try to find out where this particular word was referred in, in a particular tv show so you can see replicator was mentioned in the star trek tv show so what we see from this part that uh, we should be using uh, search engines as well uh, to to find out more information about certain people so now we know that uh, Jim is uh, Jim is interested in Star Trek TV show so later on these kind of information would be helpful for us so right now we just know that he is interested in Star Trek season or like he was part of Star Trek actually later on we will see that Jim was a was part of Star Trek season uh, uh, TV show okay so now we have completed this first part where we did just basic enumeration or basic uh, walk through through the website and found these answers okay now let's go to the second and uh, third part where it's talking about inject the juice so here what we are focusing on we are trying for some kind of injections injections could be sql injections command injections email injections we have not discussed these uh, bugs so far in our previous sessions and we are not going to go much in depth here as well we will just complete the part that is required to complete these labs as of now later on for sure in future we'll be specifically dedicatedly uh, discussing all these topics and trying to uh, find out what are the different ways of finding these kind of bugs okay so here let's focus on the first question logging to the administrator account so that's the first part so what we are supposed to do using SQL injection we are supposed to log in into the administrator account okay now we know the admin uh, accounts email address right we found it here uh, under apple juice right so this is the email address let me 
put it in my notes here so that I can refer it later on so yeah this email address we already know but we don't know the password actually now if I click on his account go to login I put it like this I put some random password it is saying that invalid email address or invalid password okay any one of these is incorrect we know password is incorrect because we don't know it right now now how we can utilize SQL injection here we are not going to discuss a lot about it but we'll just see a basic way of bypassing login panels uh, using SQL injections okay so uh, what is uh, SQL injection uh, if whatever input you are providing okay that input is being uh, used by a SQL query okay uh, to retrieve something from the backend database okay so to interact with databases okay we have SQL queries okay uh, uh, or written statements to get some data from the data uh, from uh, the backend databases okay so in the databases we have tables right in tables we have rows and columns so data is stored in that way okay when I say table database I'm just showing you something like this like a table could look like something like this okay so yeah like this table contains employee ID last name first name gender so this is something uh, that is a table in that we have employee ID last name these are columns and all this data these are stored in different rows okay now suppose uh, whenever we are logging okay we are providing email address and password okay now suppose the SQL query that is being run whenever you are clicking on login these username this email address and password is being sent to the website okay and the server website is running a query to check whether this email address and password is valid or not okay it is going to do it using SQL query okay so it is going to query the database using SQL query to check whether this email address and password is found in uh, in a in a table okay whether this combination is valid or not okay so what I mean by that a SQL query could uh, look uh, something like this I'll just give an example here that suppose there is a table okay table name is users okay that's the table name and within that we have uh, two columns first name is email okay first column is our email and then the second column is password okay now this is the table so now I will put some uh, data into this users table okay just for better reference suppose first column is email second is password within that we have like test at the rate gmail.com the password is uh, 123 again suppose in the same table we have our this email address admin email address and the password for that could be like test 123 or something anything it could be there okay again we have suppose tom rider at the rate gmail.com and the password could, could be testing okay so there are different users in the users table okay and the combination is something like email and password okay in that table okay I'm not uh, marking any body here to show you the exact table I can't do it because it's a text editor but I'm just showing you how a table would look like okay so this is the kind of data email and password is the column and these are the different rows in this table okay now what the server would be doing whenever we are providing any email address and password in the login form okay server is going to run a query SQL query I will write it down in, in a while uh, but it will be using that query it will be checking whether whatever email address and password we have provided it is valid or not so in case we provide an email address as test at the gmail.com and password as 123 it is found in this table right it is found in the users table that means it's a valid user so the server would allow us to log in okay but if we provide a like email address as test at the rate gmail.com and we provided password as 12345 that means that's not valid right that entry is not there in the users table that's why it's not going to allow us to log in okay so similarly using that functionality only okay we have to find a way to bypass this uh, functionality okay for the admin user so I told you uh, I'm just giving an example that what SQL query could be running in the backend to to check whether the email address and password we are providing is valid or not or whether it is there in the users table or not okay so it could be something like select this this is a valid SQL query actually something like, uh, that looks like this that is used to query the databases or tables okay so select user uh, select email comma password from users 
okay where email is equals to and password is equals to something okay now what I have done is using this kind of query what you can do you can find a particular data for example from users table you want to get the email and password okay select email and password from this table wherever this condition is matching okay so at the end we are mentioning the condition and whatever records or whatever rows matches to that condition it is going to return uh, the the column values for that particular row only okay so for example here if we talk about like suppose we provided uh, user email address as test at the red gmail.com then what the query would become it would book, become something like this where email equals to so here we have provided email as test at the red gmail.com from our uh, login and password equals to uh, password equals to suppose one two three four five now when the server runs this query it is going to find out from this users table whether there is anything that matches to this particular condition like email address is test at the red gmail.com password is one two three four here you can see there is no such record so if there is no record matching it it won't be able to get email and password column values for that particular record because there is no such record okay if there was a valid record then it will get the email and password values for that particular record okay for example if we had provided one two three then this particular record right from the users table matches and this query actually it will return what it will return something like this because we are selecting these two part as comma separated it will return something like this test at the rate gmail.com comma one two three okay that would be the output of this particular SQL statement okay but because we provided four five it is not going to match to anything that's why the output of uh, this particular uh, SQL statement would be null okay now what we can do this was our input right we provided it here in the in the uh, in the login panel right so it is controlled by the user who is trying to log in okay also the password was also provided by user only so what the server is doing whatever user is providing it is putting it between the single quotes and trying to run the query now how we can try to bypass it uh, let's see there is an and operator here as well okay remember that that both of these should be matched for this uh, particular statement to be true so email should be test at the rate gmail.com password should be one two three four five because there is an and operator means both of these should uh, return as true then only uh, like whatever record is matching to both of these conditions that will be only considered as a valid record okay so now what we can do let's see if we inject something like this like uh, where email equals to so this is where our user inputs are injected right what if in the email address I put something like single quote okay then I put or single quote uh, sing, single quote just a minute okay what if I put in the email address something like this single quote or single quote one what that will do it will get injected between the single quotes and now you can see that now the condition got updated something like this where email is equals to single quote single quote there is nothing in between means where the email is empty or okay now it is or means even if the condition after the or is true the whole statement would become a true statement okay so it will return a record so whenever the record is returned okay it will take the email and password for that particular record and it will allow us to log in so now that you can see where the email will be empty or single code one single code this is actually considered as a true statement okay SQL injection later on when we discuss in detail you will get a better idea uh, but for the time being just understand that whenever you are able to uh, put one as a condition okay like between single quotes or without even single quotes okay if you are able to inject one in a in a which in a in a, 
in a in a conditional statement okay that will become true okay so now even if we put here like test 1 2 3 it doesn't matter because this or statement is there and it will become true actually so so what we will do we will try to inject this part in the email address okay uh, okay we, we are not going to inject it in the email part because we have to log in as an admin so in the email we will put valid email address but we will inject this part in the password section so that the password section returns true actually so if we do it in the password now uh, in the email uh, what we will put our email address of admin account so when we put it put the email address of admin account and put in the password something like this this part single code or single code one you can see that this this whole statement is going to return as true okay and the email is already valid so whatever record matches to like email uh, is equal to this part it is going to allow us to get an email and password for that, that particular record and I will show you a particular code here actually if that makes sense here see uh, it's it's a, a bit complicated but I will just try to make it simple uh, here see this is a so what in the first line it is doing it is getting whatever username or password okay here we are this is not related to this OS uh, shop but it's something uh, related to some other functionality but here you can see that whatever username you provided it was stored into uname variable whatever password you provided it stored into password now there is a query that looks like select username pass from users where username is equals to whatever you provided right this variable is here and password is equals to whatever password you provided here okay this is the query now in this statement what it is doing it is uh, it is uh, running this query okay using this mysql query statement after that here in this statement it is trying to fetch how many records return returned when we ran this query okay so whenever like uh, if you look at this example whenever you provide a valid username password it is going to return only that record only okay so that's how it is so if, if you like provide valid test at the rate gmail.com and 123 at password this this rows okay it will going to contain this row only okay because that's the only row that is matching to the condition that you like matching to the email and password that you provided right after putting it in the query now here you can see if there is anything in the rows okay this is a simple if statement from coding perspective if there is anything okay there is no comparison but normally when you put it uh, some variable values in a if statement like this it means that if there is anything returned in that particular variable you are allowed you are logged in successfully and if there is nothing in that variable uh, then you are not logged in so whenever you provide a valid username and password you will always have something in the rows variable but whenever you do not provide valid credential you won't have anything okay now using this part okay because we provided a valid email address and in the password section we made this whole statement as a true by injecting this part in the password okay this part only single quote or single quote one so that the whole statement gets uh, a bit uh, what you say uh, gets balanced and there is a or in between so even if this is not true but this is true this whole statement will become true okay so the email address is valid and the password section is returning as a true so whatever row matches to this particular email address that will be returned and uh, we will be logged in as a admin user because in the rows variable we will have a particular record that will be this record okay so that's why we'll get logged in let's see how uh, it looks like in practical it's 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 not uh, mandatory that you will be always able to bypass it this way like by injecting only this part it depends on the uh, how the query is written right because we in the initially we assume that the query is written something like this okay so most of the time what you will have to do you will have to inject a number of uh, values in password or email okay to bypass it okay uh, there are there is a sql injection injection uh, login bypass cheat sheet right uh, there are different uh, cheat sheets available so you can 
try these yeah these all these different uh, payloads you can try to send in the password or email section and see whether you are able to log in or not okay also on this particular article as well from securityidiots.com we have few uh, injection points injection payloads so, so that looks something like this okay let's see if we are able to do it uh, with the one that we mentioned like single quote or single quote one let's see if we put the admin email address and here what I will do I will put single quote just a moment single quote or single quote one that's all let's see so it is still showing you that uh, this didn't work actually uh, let's see if we are able to inject it after the email as well okay see when I let me show you what I did what I have done is let me copy that email admin email again what I have done is like by just injecting that single quote or just a moment single quote one it in the password it was not working okay so what I did I put it after the email part okay now see what I will do I will show you if I put it in the email how our query would look like okay so if I put it here whatever we have provided right that will be injected between this single quotes part only like between these single quotes so this part we have provided on our browser and see what it is going to say that and in the password section as well we have provided something like this so let's put it something yeah so it looks like this now see this condition uh, this query got updated into this part and now in the email you have uh, where this is the first statement this is the second statement and if both of these are true because there is an end operator if both of these are true then only we are going to get an email and password from any valid row right so let's see whether it is going to return true this part is definitely going to return true because there is a record with email address as uh, admin at the rate juiceshop.op right this is a record and we are saying password is either empty or it is returning single quote single quote one means it is returning true directly true we are not comparing with password but we are directly returning true so it this this part is returning true this whole part even though there is no record with empty password but there is this is always true actually so this is this whole part is returning true and this part is all already returning a email address which is a valid email address like something like this so the whole condition would uh, become true and it will return us this particular record okay so that's why when we when we tried this like this it didn't work but it is working like this okay when we put it after the email address it is working so we are able to log in into the admin account and yeah the same thing is also explained here as well I will be sharing this particular link in the chat as well just to just so you can understand the SQL injection a bit more in detail so this is what it is and we should have actually put after login into the account we should have put uh, the uh, the flag that we got once we got logged in uh, let's see if uh, we can get it from a scoreboard just a moment let's see if we are able to use this part Let's log out.
using that payload as well we are able to log in but earlier was also working um, I'm not sure where we are supposed to find get that particular log okay so we'll skip it for the time being uh, but yeah tomorrow when we start we'll put that I'll get into that part okay and I will show you where you can get the flag so just skip it uh, for the time being now what it is saying uh, login to the vendors account Okay, vendors account so let's see what is the email address for that vendor user so yeah this is the email address for vendor and the same thing that we tried here we can do it for this account as well so this is suppose the vendor this is the email address for that particular user the password could be anything like yama at the rate uh, 123 anything okay but we don't know the password we only know the uh, the email address so let's try to uh, this is our normal query without anything now if you put our this particular email address here okay and after that what we can do this is the email address and we don't know the password there is one more way what we can do we can ask the the SQL statement or the the server to ignore the rest of the query like we can comment out the rest of the query how we can do it uh, suppose if we are able to make this query to something like this like uh, just uh, just match a condition where the email is this that's all we are not worried about the password what if it is possible uh, and in that case it is definitely going to return records right because uh, that user is valid in uh, in one of the records right like bender at the juice shop dot op is there so that email is definitely valid it is going to return a record and we are we are commenting the rest of the query okay how we can do it if we if you inject something like this okay in the in the email section if you inject something like this like the the user's email address then single quote just to satisfy the starting single quote okay after that you comment out like using hyphen hyphen twice what you can do you can ignore the rest of the query okay so what it will do let me put it here let me put it here so if I put it like this here now everything after these double uh, hyphens okay this will part will be ignored so even if I remove this part okay it doesn't matter or even if it is there it is not going to matter okay on the server even if this part is there it is not going to matter it's not going to run actually so let me remove it now what does this mean it means that select email and password from a per users table like from uh, users table wherever this condition is matching so this condition is definitely going to match right because we have a record with this particular email address and there is a hyphen hyphen after it that means uh, do not uh, worry about whatever there is after the query single code we put it because we wanted to if if we do not put single code it's going to give an error that uh, there is a single code missing because by default SQL queries have a single code uh, before any values uh, is being put into the SQL query so that single code we wanted to balance okay so that's why after the email address we put a single code then double hyphen this condition is definitely going to be true because there is an email address with this particular record uh, this particular email address once it returns that uh, record or that row in the code right I showed uh, showed it to you earlier that there is a if statement that is checking whenever there is a record return right you are logged in successfully so the same thing we will do uh, let me copy that email address with which we want to log in so now let's move on to the account section login here I'll put email address then a single code then double hyphen okay in the password I can put anything because even if I put uh, uh, wrong password that part will be ignored from the query because of these double single quotes login and you can see we logged in successfully and yeah first time whenever you try to complete a uh, particular challenge you get that flag so that admin login I had tried earlier so that's why I didn't see it uh, again so yeah this flag we have to copy we have to submit in this part so yeah it's almost yeah almost 40 minutes now so yeah that's all for today uh, thanks for joining guys